Hello and welcome to the Electrician's Hangout. <laughs> you know, one of the uh, subscribers on uh, my YouTube channel for the Electrician's Hangout asked, uh, asked me to do a tutorial on how to check current with a meter. Um, actually, we want to do this, this tutorial over the weekend and the camera died. <laughs> I mean, like... Five minutes into the to the tutorial, poof! My wife was like, "Babe, I'm sorry, it's it's dead." Yeah, but anyways, now we fully charged and we're ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead. And we're gonna do this thing. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to, as usual, give you the most thorough uh, tutorial that I can, and give you all of the the uh, information that's needed to be able to uh, approach checking current with a meter like a professional and know exactly what it is you're doing and why you're doing it and so forth and so on so let's go ahead and get started um, what I have here is uh, it looks like three different types of meters but in reality it's, it's two different types um, but we're gonna call it three different types and, and we'll get into that I'm gonna start out uh, with a reg regular digital multimeter okay um, and the reason I'm going to start out with the, the digital regular digital multimeter because this is the meter that I do not want you to use to try to check current I'm gonna repeat that do not use this type of meter to try to check current and, and there are several reasons why and let's let's just try to run down down the list there um, First and foremost, in order for you to even begin to check current with this meter, you would first have to properly uh, insert your test leads into the, the, the desired uh, prongs here. And well, I'm not going to go over that because, like I said, I don't even want you using this type of meter to, to check current. Uh, okay. With this type of meter, in order to check current, first and foremost, you would actually have to put your prongs in series with whatever leg of electricity you're trying to check current on, which basically means you're physically inserting the meter into the, to the actual circuit. Uh, and the current that you're trying to check is running through the meter, which in itself is very dangerous because... Anything could happen while you have the meter inserted into the circuit. I mean, something, something could short circuit and the breaker fail to open, which means that when you have a, a short circuit condition or some type of uh, fault on a circuit, you could have uh, a, a lot of current. I mean, in a matter in fractions of a second, you can reach thousands and thousands of, of amperes of current. Uh, the circuit breaker is designed to keep that from happening, but if the circuit breaker was to fail and you had your meter inserted into the circuit, we could all pretty much see what would happen. And actually, the, the, the meter itself is fused and it tries to protect you against something like that, but uh, you never know that fuse could fail, the breaker could fail, you could have catastrophic failures down the line, and... You could end up with a meter exploding literally in your hand, which wouldn't be good. Um, do not use And also, these meters are only capable, even if everything worked properly, checking a very small amount of current. Uh, and that's what the, that's what the current, uh, the, the, the current setting on these meters are typically used for. Like, you know, I'm a industrial uh, electronics technician which basically means I troubleshoot automated control systems so I need a meter like this with a current setting to, 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 to perform certain tasks something that you would commonly use a meter like this to check current for would be like say uh, a closed loop feedback system where you have a transducer like a pressure switch or, or flow transmitter or something that uses an analog feedback signal like say 4 to 20 uh, milliamps to send a signal back to some type of PLC or, or something that processes that analog signal and you need to check that that analog signal that's where something like this will come into play 
but that's neither here nor there and this is not a industrial controls tutorial but uh this is not the type of meter that you want to use for checking current so got that out of the way and hopefully i gave enough and i scared you guys enough to not even think about using something like this to check current hopefully the second type of meter that we're going to look at is a clamp on meter this is the meter that you should be using to check current with you notice it has a clamp around it um, I told you before that this meter actually has to be physically inserted into the circuit in other words it has to be put in series with whatever wire you're, you're checking or circuit that you're checking if you were using this type of meter whereas this uses a uh, CT uh, has a CT in it or was called a warmer. A uh, little teeny bit of electrical theory. I'm, I'm going to try to keep it really, really, really simple. Um, when current flows through a conductor, a magnetic field is set up around a conductor, all the way around it, in a circular path. Actually, it emanates from all, all the way around, 360 degrees around a conductor, and extends out from the conductor. If, it, if it's a DC circuit that you're looking at, this magnetic field extends from the conductor and stays there. It doesn't move. Whereas an AC circuit, because the current is constantly changing polarity, the field is constantly expanding and collapsing. Expand, collapse as the, the, the sine wave moves through a cycle there. So... And that's something's very important to know when you get into electrical theory because it's the basis for and uh, transformers and, and motors and things of that nature because they are inductive uh, devices. But again, we're not going to get into all of that. That's not what this tutorial was supposed to be about. Uh, suffice to say, the magnetic field that's set up around a conductor is directly proportional to the amount of current that's flowing through the conductor. In other words, the more current you have, the stronger the magnetic field. The less current you have, the weaker the magnetic field. The job of this type of meter is to look at the strength of that magnetic field set up around your conductor and convert it to something that actually makes sense to me and you, uh, which is a current reading. Okay. This meter is a type of clamp on meter, but instead of calling it a clamp on, let's just call it a slide on. And as you can see, with this type of type of meter, you would actually, if you squeeze here, the jaws open, and you will put the conductor inside of of the uh, clamp there. And with this type of meter, you would actually slide your meter. I'm, or your, your, yes, your meter up on the wire like so. So if we're calling this one a clamp on, let's just call this one a slide on, just for, for giggles there. But this meter uses the same exact principle as this meter to check current. It has a CT in there. The CT reads the uh, strength of the magnetic field set up around a conductor, and, and, and that's how it uh, translates that that magnetic field strength into a digital reading for current for us. Okay. Let's look at a couple of uh, reasons why we would want to check current in a circuit. Uh, perhaps we have a circuit breaker that just keeps on tripping. Um, and we need to figure out if the circuit breaker is bad or if we actually overload the circuit. That would be a situation where you may want to uh, check the current that that circuit is, or the load on that circuit, or the amount of current that's being uh, uh, pulled through that circuit from, from a particular circuit breaker, or what have you. Um, one more thing. When you're checking current with either meter, you can only check one wire at a time. So you can't put two wires under it, it's not going to work. It, you know, the, 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 that's just. It's not the way it works. We're not going to get into the to the theory of it, but suffice to say, it's not going to work. You can only check one wire at a time, okay? One wire at a time. Uh, another reason may be to check the total load of your service coming into your house to determine whether or not uh, 
you need to upgrade your service or, or something of, of that nature. But at the end of the day, whatever reason you 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 need to uh, figure out what the amount of current flowing in a particular circuit is, this is the type of meter that you want to use. Uh, what we'll do is we will go ahead and test uh, some current. This particular meter has uh, settings for checking voltage and current. This particular one here, if you go to the A with a little squiggly line there, that means that it's going to check AC amperage. Um, we're going to take and we're going to place our meter on the wire. Okay. Right now, you, what you see is zero amps. If we were to turn on an, uh, one of the lights, okay, with this particular light, it's, it's like registering practically nothing because it's, a, it's an energy efficient light. So let's turn one more light on there, here. And as you can see, we're reading uh, two tenths of an amp. Uh, if we add more load to it, this incandescent bulb is going to draw a lot more than, say, even just these two because because of the nature of it. We're not going to get into that either. That will be a subject for a whole nother uh, tutorial, but let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, we went up to six tenths of an amp. So let's let's turn these, these uh, energy efficient lights off and look at the current draw, which is uh, almost four times the, the amount of these two lights here. We're reading somewhere around four tenths of an amp, whereas we were reading uh, one one tenth of an amp with with two of these guys. So as you can see, uh, but th th that's not the we're not talking about energy efficient lighting. You guys got excuse me. I like to ramble and and go on and on and on, and I apologize for that. But that's this type of meter here. That's the clamp on. Let's go with our meter dub slide on. <laughs> Just like the uh, clamp on the slide on has a setting that has an A with a little squiggly line, which pretty much denotes current. Okay, and we're going to use the same principle there by sliding it on. And as you can see, when we slide it on, we have uh, one half an amp. This one is reading. Let's throw these guys in because maybe we're a little, little off there. When we use this particular meter, and it may be a little bit more accurate because of the proximity of the wire to the uh, to the, to the, to the CT inside there, we're reading uh, almost one amp, nine tenths of an amp. Okay, so let's see what uh, the two energy efficient lights read on this particular meter. The the energy efficient lights are reading. Uh, approximately four tenths of an amp and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn them guys off and turn this guy on and the incandescent bulb is reading somewhere around uh, five tenths of an amp or half of an amp one half amp so that's pretty much the how you use a slide on meter or a clamp on amp, amp meter and I mean, there's not much to it more than what I just showed you when it, when it comes to the actual testing of the circuit. Uh, obviously, you want to be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to uh, hurt yourself. You know, do not want to use this type of digital multimeter to try to check current. That's why I didn't even go through showing you guys how it would be done because I don't want you trying it. It's dangerous. It's, it's not suitable for this type of uh, uh, testing. So we're not. Gonna, I'm not going to even go over it. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's, it's, it's highly advisable that you do not use this type of meter to try to check current. And I'm going to leave it at that. You have been warned. Um, I think that I have covered everything. Um, to the guy that, that asked me to do the tutorial, I apologize for the length of time it took me to get to it, but I have so many things going on, and like I told you guys, once somebody asked me to do another type of uh, tutorial that required buying, you know, 
hundreds of dollars worth of material. So look, I don't make any money doing this. Um, I do it just to help people because somebody helped me, you know. Uh, I'm just doing my part to try to contribute to the community and make make YouTube a place where you can come and find quality information to, to get jobs done that need to get done. Um, with that being said, I'm going to bring this, this particular tutorial to a close. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Don't forget to come, come visit me at the Electrician's Hangout. Um, you know, it's a lot of information on the website. Uh, once I get this video done, I'll throw it on a page somewhere in there. So it'll be in there with the rest of the videos along with a ton of other information with electrical theory, different tests and exams you can take, things like that. But um, anyways, I've been rambled enough and took up enough of your time. Hope this was helpful, and I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.